Welcome to the teaching ministry of Reverend JFK Mensa, a seasoned Bible teacher with over 40 years of ministry experience. He is a pastor, a church planter, a missionary, and an international conference speaker. He is passionate about making Christ like disciples worldwide. JFK Mensa is the general overseer of Great Commission Church International. May you be transformed as you listen to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Shall we have a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we are grateful 2019 has rolled to the end of August. We have come so that you can sandpaper our conscience once again for thanksgiving. Help us, Lord, to, to feed on your word. Change our attitudes so that we will be grateful beings. In Jesus' name, Amen. My first serious attention to unthankfulness came when we went to Agotimekpetwe in the Volta region. And we went for a crusade. So some women organized themselves and were cooking for us. And, you know, the stew was particularly nice. They call it Ubese Tadi, those from Togo area there. So those days, five cities was like peanuts. So I asked the lady, please, who prepared this? She said, my mommy. So give this to her. Say, one of the pastors says, Thank you. It's, it's a very nice meal. Within 10, 15 minutes, the lady returned with her mother. And she said, Who is the pastor? Who is the pastor? And I said, Yeah, trouble. Oh. I'm in for something. And then the daughter said, Yes, this pastor. Then she said, Pastor, I have cooked for men all my life. No man, not even my husband, has ever said thank you. This money you have given me, I won't spend it until I die. I'm tying it to my cloth that I at least cooked for one man in the world who said thank you. I went home beaten. Because my wife cooks and I take it for granted. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I was pained that here was a simple woman who has cooked for men all her life, but no man had ever stopped to say thank you. And she was old at that time. Do you feel ingratitude? When somebody is unkind, when somebody is ungrateful, when somebody is, you know, refusing to acknowledge your investment, when somebody is deliberately trying to neglect or set aside all your sacrifice, how you are bending back double to, to, to help that person. When the person deliberately wants to, to ignore you, do you feel it? God feels it. God feels it. 
My topic is the importance of thanksgiving. And I want to line up five major reasons why we should be thankful. And then after that, I will try and work on the how to be thankful. You must understand that in Luke chapter 6, verse 35, the Bible says God still gives rain and gives sunshine to wicked and unthankful people. Even though they don't, they don't say thank you, He still gives them rain. Uh, Luke 6, 35. Thank you. Who is doing that for me? Wow. God bless you. You know why I carry my wife along every time. <laughs> thank you very much. But love your enemies. Do good to them. And lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you'll be children of the Most High, because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Ingratitude is not only an act, it is a habit, a character a lifestyle and a spirit. When somebody is, is not grateful, you are not the only person he or she is treating that way. Be consoled. Other people too have been hurt equally by that person's ingratitude. So, Let's, let's look at some of the reasons why we should be grateful, but above all, we should give thanks to God. Number one is the scripture says we owe God thanksgiving just because He created us in His image and after His likeness. Let's read. Psalm 100. The argument is strongest there. Psalm 100. Yes. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Come before the Lord with joyful song. Worship him in gladness. Why? Know that the Lord is God. The Lord is God. It is He who made us. It is He who made us. And we are His. We are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Because we are His people, we are the sheep of His pasture, He made us. Because of that, we should be grateful. We should come before Him with thanksgiving. Yes. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Whenever you are coming to God, give thanks to him and praise you see, his When name. you get to the gate, start thanking him loudly. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. In Psalm 8, from verse 3 to 8, David analyzes the fact that when I think of the heavens, the work of your fingers, I, I imagine the stars, I look at the constellations, I look at, at your work. What is man that you are mindful of him? Psalm 8, 3 to 8. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels 
and crown them with glory Even and honor. If they make you president, you are so busy, you don't have time for your wife and children. Now God is the king of the universe. Do you know how many stars he has to meet each morning? How many committee meetings he has? Do, do, can you imagine the number of angels who are waiting in queue to speak to him? What is man that you are mindful of him? Or the son of man that you even notice him? Yes. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. Can you imagine? All flocks and heads and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. It pains God when human beings don't thank him and appreciate and acknowledge him. It pains him because he created us in his image and after his likeness. He crowned us with glory and honor. He put all things under his feet, our feet. And you know, no angel has that privilege. We are going to judge angels. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 5 to 8 says that the world to come has not been put under angels. It has been put under us. He left nothing out. In fact, even if you don't have any money in your pocket, if you are not married, you don't have a child, if you're, you have just lost your mother, you need to enter God's gates with thanksgiving because you are a human being. You are created in His image. You, 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 you need to, every day, just thank the Lord. You have to make it a policy that every morning when I get up, I want to thank God because he made me in his image and after his likeness. You owe him a basic thank you daily for everything that ever happens to you because you are, he is first and foremost good to you in making you a human being. And I was always saying, he could have made you an ant, he could have made you a mosquito, he could have made you a snake, he could have made you a goat. You would not have anything to say. Yes, when he made you a man instead of a woman, or a woman instead of a man, what did you have you to say? You can't do anything about it. Therefore, if he had made you, you know, a giraffe, what, what would you have to say? You owe God thanksgiving first and foremost because he made you in his image and likeness. And the close thing upon that, I tell my family every day, is to say thank you to God for Jesus Christ. The salvation we have in Christ Jesus it's something which every single day you get up, you just have to go and say thank you. Because those who are wallowing in sin and in ignorance, for no, you know, recently we sent a team to have a Bible school among the Chakali tribe. And when they went, they said the whole town, there was only one house that claimed to be Christian. Everybody in the whole, you are talking about 3,000 people in the village or town. All of them were Muslims. By accident of where you have been born, just that you have come in contact with the gospel, you are born again. Why shouldn't you thank God every day? Those people don't have the gospel just because of where they are, where they have been born. You know, 81% of the whole of Asia, 4.3 billion human beings, 81% have never seen a Christian in their life from birth to death. They have never met a Christian. They have never seen a, a Christian before since they were born. Buddhists, Muslims, Shintoists, Hindus, they have never. It's by accident of the fact that heaven located you with grace. That's why you are here. 
You could have been a devout Muslim in Saudi Arabia. Yes. Or, or, or a worshipping Hindu by the river Ganges by now. Walking 600 miles on your knees from New Delhi to Calcutta to be holy. Yeah. Why shouldn't you get up every morning? Whether you have money or not, whether you have children or not, you are married or not, whether you have passed an exam or failed it, whether, whatever is happening to you, you owe God thanksgiving for the Jesus that he gave us. Romans 5, it says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Such an unspeakable gift. Should we not thank him? Should we not thank him? And I always want to thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. With us, in us forever. John 14, 16, 17. Our seal to the day of redemption. Ephesians 4, 30. I am excited that God gave us His Spirit to be with us and in us to empower us. And then also, daily, I thank God for the Bible. Every day until I die, when I get up, I will say to God, Thank you for the Bible. The wisdom in the Bible. The truth in the Bible. The way of salvation in the Bible. The testimonies in the Bible. I, I, I can't thank God enough. When I get to heaven, I will tell him, thank you for the Bible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the Bible. Sodom and Gomorrah had no Bible. Noah's generation had no Bible. Nineveh had no Bible. Thank you, Father, for the Bible. I am forever grateful for the Bible. So, that is the first reason why you, if you keep your thanksgiving on eternal things, your mood swings will not affect your thanksgiving. Am I saying something? Because all of us, you know, sometimes you wake up and it's Monday and you have to go to work and that boss of yours and then and when you get there he's going to back out some orders again and he's going to annoy. When you get up, the temptation is to carry the day. But, if you keep your thanksgiving on things which don't change, you, you will have a stable attitude of thanksgiving. This is why I'm starting with that. But number two is everything you have Is directly from God. Christians call it stewardship. John chapter 3, verse 27. John the Baptist told us that no man can receive anything except it is given to him from above. John 3, 27. So this John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. Everything you have is from him. All your gifts, your intellectual ability, your artistic, you know, you name it, your voice in the choir, your, everything is from him. James chapter 1 verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes from God, the father of light in whom there is no shadow or turning. And First Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. He says, who makes you to differ from another person? What do you have that you did not receive? Yes. For who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? 
And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? Your beauty, your parents, your home. I mean, the circle in which you move, your relationships, your friends, people who like you, all those things, we don't take stock of them. But life could have been unbearable without some of the friends God gave you. According to uh, Psalm 50, from verse 10 to 12, he says that, you know, verse 9 says, if I were hungry, I won't tell you. But he, in, on three different occasions in those verses, God claims ownership of everything on this earth. Psalm 50, verse 10 to 12. Yes. For every animal of the forest is mine. Every animal, that grass cutter you ate in your soup yesterday, belongs to somebody. Every animal in the forest is mine. And the cattle on a thousand hills. The cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains. I know every bird in the mountains. And the insects in the fields are mine. They are his. If I were hung- Yes. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. Now, if you can claim ownership of these things, then let's go to court. So that you drag the thing out in the high court with God. But if you know that you know that the title of the ownership rests with God, then he deserves thanksgiving from you. <laughs> Because you are using a lot of things which are not yours. The air you breathe, there is no air bill. But it's not yours. There is no air bill, but the air is not yours. The rainfall, is it yours? The sunshine, is it yours? Do you have a right to it? What do you mean? The day he withdraws your breath, you die. If it were yours, stay. Stay. The gold mines. How about uh, Haggai chapter 2, verse 8? He says the silver and the gold. This man, there is an ownership to the things around us. Job chapter 1, verse 21 said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return hither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job chapter 1, verse 21. And said, then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Please, I want to persuade you. You know, many times when we give thanks to God, this 21st generation feels we are stupid. You see? They feel we are fools. When, I mean, you thank God, you bring money to the church, you, you, you try to worship God and live for Him. This, the youth of today feel, Daddy, why? Mommy, why? Why? You worked, you sweated, and you are taking the money to some pastor to chop. Why? You see, I'm not only talking about giving money in church. I'm saying that nothing on this earth is yours. You have to be persuaded. And you have to persuade yourself. And persuade the people around you, your children and all, at your workplace. That look, this earth, we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain you can carry nothing out. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. You, you need to uh, persuade yourself. When you get up in the morning, you know, instead of saying, hey, this is my fridge. Hey, Look, I just bought a 24-inch flat-screen TV. Hey, look at my car. You know, a friend of mine, he said when the father wakes up every morning, he walks on his story building and looks at where he has parked his car. Then he comes back. Yeah. You know, that, that, there is <laughs> that possessive attitude in us which makes us not want to thank God. You, you need to, 
to break it in your spirit. Are you with me? Recently, no, not recently, yesterday, a friend of mine from the UK, you know, Christian Fellowship, way back on campus, he sent me one of these WhatsApp uh, YouTube things which has gone viral. And the man was preaching and said that uh, in Africa we pray so that we will be rich. We can't overcome the poverty with prayer. We need to look. These are the rich people outside there. They met a need and this. We need to be wise. And he sent it to me. My stomach. So I replied. I told him money is not everything. You are so rich, but look at your churches. Europe right now has 2% of Christianity. You are so rich. You have so much wealth. Look at the suicides. Eh? Look at the homosexuals. Look, look. Why should you be proud that you are rich and that Africans pray? It's not every African who goes to pray and we just pray to be rich. Every, for every one bad prosperity preacher, there are hundreds of us faithfully doing our work. You know, I went to a place when one of the professors from America, he came and he was just blasting us that he, for him, doesn't pay tithes to the church because, you know, these pastors, they are all chiefs and this. And I told him that I've been pastoring for 40 years now. God is my witness. I have never mismandled God's money. I am at post. When you see something I have which looks like luxury, somebody gave it to me. The house I'm living in, two plots, is because somebody bought it for me. The house I'm, uh, yes, built the house. The CDM center, those two story buildings were built by somebody. I'm not living a luxurious lifestyle. It's not every pastor who is doing that. And you can't say because of one or two pastors, then don't pay tithes to the church. What are you talking about? And it was open because we, uh, it was a panel discussion, so I had to vigorously withstand him. <laughs> please, please. The money in your pocket is not yours. Yes, your car is not yours. Even your promotion, Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7. It says, promotion does not come from the east or west. It is God who exalts. Yes, you can read it. Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7. Yes. No one from the east or the west or from the desert can exalt themselves. No one. No one can exalt himself or herself. It is God who judges. Yes. He brings one down. He exalts another. Yes. And add First Samuel chapter 2 from verse 6 to 8. The Lord kills. He makes a life. He makes a person poor and he makes a person rich. God takes very poor ordinary people from the downhill and the dust and gives them the throne of princes and say rule here because the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. 1 Samuel 2, 6 to 8. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honor. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. Amen. I could go on forever. But this is the second reason why you should thank God. Apart from creating you in His image, giving you His Son Jesus to save you, and giving you the Bible for wisdom, everything around you, all the things you call possessions, they belong to Him. You need to walk around and disabuse your mind. That possessive attitude which says, This is mine. Look, sometimes I go to my wardrobe, I put my hand on my chest and say, God, show me who to give these things to. They are wasting my time. Are they yours? 
Why shouldn't you thank God when He gives you any of them? When He gives you a promotion? Why, why shouldn't you? You see, I don't know if I mentioned here before, one of my church members, she was weeping anytime she came. She said, Pastor, I just want to marry. Oh, I, I vow to God that if any man will tell me I want to marry you, I will pay a vow to God. Just that. Nobody, even if it doesn't work out, just that somebody has told me in life, I want to marry you. It's enough, Pastor. Then she got married. No child was coming. Then she came to me and said, Pastor, I wish I were dead. If I hadn't married, nobody would know that I'm barren and childless. Now that I'm married, look, everybody knows that. Ah! Look, let me tell you, an ungrateful person, no matter what you do for the person, is ungrateful. And a grateful person, the least you do for the person, is so excited. You know, recently, they brought a girl to me in the office. And she said, the, the, the mother said, this is your daughter. I said, I don't remember her. In fact, I don't remember her. And she told the story. When I was pastoring, this was her third girl. And the husband said she should have bought it. Because he, uh, he doesn't want all girls, all girls. This. Then I went and told the husband that. Let her bring forth the child. Give her my name. I'm the father. That weekend, I went to Lome. And I was just chatting with one of the ladies. And she said, oh, I have eight girls. And even if God gives me a ninth one, I will accept it with thanks. You know, as she spoke, I knew it was the Holy Spirit who was talking to me. You see, you see if you are an ungrateful person, you are never satisfied. Anything people do for you, you can't say thank you. Because you expect it. And then they do this. And then you say, why didn't he do that? And then you should have done that. And then they do that. And God, uh, why did you get that from me? Why? And every day, you are full of complain, 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 complain. You are a, uh, a one man or one woman grievance committee. You are angry with the traffic lights. You are angry with the weather. You are angry with the office. You are angry everywhere because you, nothing people do for you ever makes you grateful. Even God doesn't satisfy you. But that brings me to my third reason. Ingratitude gets on God's nerves. Should I say that again? When you are ungrateful, even though God still bears with you, it annoys him. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verse 1 to 2, the Bible says one of the characters that will rule the last days will be ingratitude. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 2. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. The last days will not be bad because there will be no sunrise, sunset. They will be bad because of people's character. You see? Ungrateful. I bless the wedding of one uh, brother and sister in the church. And they got angry and left the church. Do you know what the lady did? She removed the wedding ring I blessed and said she doesn't want anything of me to be found on her. So she threw it away, got a new wedding ring so that another pastor would bless it for her before the marriage. She is dead now, but I mean, that's how she demonstrated. She doesn't want anything of mine around her. 
This is the age we are living in. Human beings will be ungrateful. And the Bible says, from such turn away. But I never like talking about ingratitude until we have read Luke chapter 17 from verse 11. Let's try and see how fast we can go. Let's read the story. Luke 17 from verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village... It is the border between Samaria and Galilee because, I mean... Jews had nothing to do with Samaritans. And therefore, it was a place where outcasts, abandoned people, lepers, this is the place to find them because it's like the witchcraft village. Yes. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. They knew where to turn in trouble. Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. Okay, they were ten. Nine suddenly realized that hey, I haven't seen my wife for a long time hey, hey, and my boy, he must be grown by now hey, that uncle who wanted to give me a farm before, I, oh and, and nine of them rushed away he threw himself at Jesus' feet you know this passage cools my heart because as a pastor look <laughs> the number of human beings I have Struggle to help. And they leave. And, and you are like, Jesus got 90% ingratitude. So if any pastor has more than 10%, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. You see, your, your heart should be prepared that. Many people you help in life, you pray with, you have all night for, you do deliverance for. Many of the people, they, they, 90%. They are all like that. You should, it shouldn't shock you. Yes. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. This, this is the one which blows me. The Jews who were Jesus' people. You see, the church had better be careful. We take our salvation and a lot of things for granted. We take God's protection for granted, God's provision, traveling mercies. We take because we are so used and familiar to God that. We feel we shouldn't thank him. You know, last time my grandson came and when they set food before me, he said, Grandpa, did you pray before you started eating? And I said, he had caught me. <laughs> I actually prayed in my heart. But it was one of those prayers which you just flash. But when he said, Grandpa, did you pray before eating? I said, is this where I have got to? <laughs> we even don't give thanks before we eat. But when you have running stomach after that, you know where to go. Yes. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Jesus asked, where are the other nine? We take it for granted that because there are so many human beings and God is being kind to so many people. He doesn't mind if we don't report back to say thank you. You are wrong. 
He knows exactly how much he put into you this 2019. He, 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 he has calculated that 10 were cleansed. Where are the other 9? Another year is coming to a close. Only you and God know what he has done for you. Therefore, only you can bring an appropriate thanksgiving to him. Nobody can understand. Yes. Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. It's okay. But I hope you got the point. God takes stock of ingratitude. Don't, don't feel that he doesn't notice. Oh, I didn't even say thank you. Oh, but God, he, he has so many people in his office and he's busy. Oh, God, yeah, he didn't even notice. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Sometimes you look back over your life and you are like, whoa. I owe God infinite thanksgiving. Infinite thanksgiving. But number four, reason why we should show gratitude is it is commanded by God that we should add thanksgiving even to our prayers. Let's read Philippians chapter 4. Verse 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. By prayer, petition, with thanksgiving. Every prayer to God must have salt. And the salt is thanksgiving. God expects that we will be so thankful that in everything we will give thanks. Let's read the, uh, where is it? Is it Ephesians 5, 17, 18? Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine. No. It's First Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18. Thank you. Thank you. Pray continually. Yes. Give thanks in all circumstances. Uh, uh, which circumstances are we to give thanks? All circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. There are many things which happen to us and we say, oh God, where are you? How can you allow this to happen to me? But the scripture commands us to give thanks in all circumstances. If Joseph had known that his brother's hatred and selling him, putting him in that well and selling him to, as a slave to Egypt, was the highway, the motorway to his becoming prime minister of Egypt. He would have said, thank you, my brothers, thank you, thank you very much. Oh, thank you, thank you, oh, thank you, thank you. And they would say, this boy, he's not thinking from, he's not in his right. But every circumstance heaven puts you. Every circumstance heaven puts you. Heaven is aware that that is the best for you in Christ Jesus. Even the time you die is the best time to die. Did I say it well? You see, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. When God asked, uh, told King Hezekiah he was going to die, I'm, I also preach it that he prayed Faith and God added 15 years to his life. But during those 15 years, Manasseh was born. And of all the kings who ruled Egypt, 
the most stupid, the most wicked, the most evil, the one whose sins made God say, this one I won't forgive, is Manasseh. If he had died 15 years earlier, he would have spared the earth, Manasseh. In every circumstance, just gave thanks. I don't understand you, Father. But if you dared to give me your son to die for me when I was a sinner, I trust you. If it were any other person who did this to me, my mouth would be full of things to tell you. But if it's you, I'm okay. You allow this? That's okay. Many of us rejoice when God does good things for us. But when you are passing through tough times, difficult things, you know, things which everybody is saying, this is unreasonable. Why? You of all people, you've said, you know, one lady said, I just don't understand God. The way my husband served the Lord. How can he die like this? Oh, pastor. <laughs> Oh, I can't understand. Oh, God. Somebody said to me, look, if God is giving a child a parable or a riddle, he should make it such that he can understand this proverb. I don't understand. I don't. Oh. In every circumstance, give thanks. Give thanks. The hand behind your life is bigger than the circumstance you are in. He was there when his son went to the cross. Shameful cross. But that death has catapulted all of us to be children of God. It was the most humiliating death. But it has brought the most glorious result. Give thanks. 2019 was not good. Your debtors ran away with your money. They won't pay. Your landlord came and put you to shame. Your car stopped working in traffic. And, you know, give thanks. Give thanks. And my final, ah, now, I'm running out of time. Don't, don't mind me. JFK is always like that. I, I, I want to argue with you that thanksgiving is an expression of faith. Thanksgiving is an expression of faith. You, this uh, leper, the tenth leper, when he came and thanked Jesus, he said, your faith has made you whole. Why? Because when you tell your, your son, oh, Johnny, don't worry. When I go to the market, I'll buy you both food. He said, hey, mommy! Hey, mommy! Oh, mommy! She's going to buy me both food. She's going to buy me. He hasn't seen the both food. But he's already giving thanks. Many, many, many times, our God, the Bible says, He calls things which are not as though they were. And whenever you express thanksgiving to God, to His people, it shows you believe Him. Look, many of us, when we get to heaven, we shall be ashamed. We shall be ashamed because of what He has prepared for us. We shall be ashamed of how for eternity, forever and ever and ever and ever, the good he intended. First Corinthians 2, 9 and 10 says, What eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has never entered the heart of man. Those are the things the Lord has prepared for those who love him. Why shouldn't you rejoice and be saying thank you before you see the things? Should you see them? Then you start saying, oh, thank you. Oh, is that it? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Why? 
Hallelujah. Well, I want the scripture to govern how you show your appreciation to God. Can I leave you there? Can I, that what I have said, has it defined for you what to do with your life? For me, I have taken a decision. All I am, all I have, all I ever hope to be, I, my gratitude to God is I give Him all. I've taken a decision in this life. I give Him all. Yes. The things I have, if he tells me do this with it, it's okay. Let me do it. I want the Holy Spirit to speak to you. I want the Spirit of God to touch you according to what you can pay back for what God has done for you in life. Shall we be on our feet? Just before we start praying, I want you to tell the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, please come and remind me of things you have done which I have forgotten. Please come and remind me of areas of my life which I owe you thanksgiving. Spirit of God, come, come Holy Spirit, come, come and remind me, come, come and remind me, come. There are areas I have forgotten. Probably it's about my children, and my grandchildren. Probably it's about my workplace, some healing you did for me, some deliverance. Probably it is some property, some provision. I don't know, but some friendship which you gave, some relationship which was of immense value to me this year. I, I want you to remind me Yes, areas of my life that I forgot to say thank you. Yes. 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 Just talk to the Lord for a moment. I want to pray with you before I drop the mic. Just lift your hands. Say, Dear Holy Spirit, I want a spirit of thanksgiving. I want a character of thanksgiving. Change my nature. Transform me. Spirit of God, come and anoint me with praise and thanksgiving. Receive, 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 receive a spirit of thanksgiving. Yes, a garment of praise. Yes, of acknowledging God for who He is in your life. Yes, receive, receive, receive. Yes, come, Holy Spirit, Kianda Baka. Yes, remove every spirit of ingratitude. Yes, Kianda Habaka. Kianda Labaga. Shega Kianda. Ngogi Kama Habaka. Spirit of God, Kianda. Fill your church with gratitude. Fill your people with gratitude. Thanksgiving. Praise. Yes, Kianda Habaka Kima Kinda Labaka. Yes, Kianda, Spirit of the Living God. Take hold of your church and transform. Transform your people. Transform your people into a thanksgiving group of people who Kianda Habaka Yemaka Kianda until the thanksgiving spreads into our homes, our children, the people we work with. Kianda Habaka Yikamaka Kianda. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, I can see the love in your eyes.
follow JFK Men's Ministries on Facebook and YouTube and invite others to listen to his podcast. You can also access some of JFK Mensa's books and keep up with his ministry at www.jfkmensaministries.org. God bless you.